conference is being recorded. What is going on, y'all? Salandia Hammond here, affectionately known as Sue Ham Baby. We are trying this thing one more time with Facebook Live. The Playwright Series this week on the Sue Ham Show on Facebook Live. We had some uh, technical difficulties earlier, and so we wanted to do it again because we want to try to be uh, on a standard of excellence at all times, right? So, guys, listen. I decided to do a playwright series this week to help aspiring playwrights or maybe playwrights who've been in the game for a while and feel like they're not getting where they need to be. So I decided to pick a few playwrights who've done some phenomenal things. And this lady today on this series, Miss Vanessa Lynn, has done it all. She is not only a playwright, but she is a writer, a ghostwriter. She has uh, penned two books, one of those books specifically for playwrights, producers and directors, and another book to get your dating life in check. Guys, we have a phenomenal show today. So I'm going to stop talking and telling you everything about Vanessa. I'm going to let her shed some good stuff. But help me welcome Miss Vanessa Lynn to the Sue Ham Show. What's up, Vanessa? What's going on, Sue Ham, baby? Hey. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. I hope we're going good. You guys give me some comments. Let me know if we are feeding good. I'm gonna be if you see me looking to the side, it's because I'm looking at my laptop. So you guys let me know how are we doing. Awesome, awesome. We got Michael Acosta on. He said, What's up, baby? Awesome. So Vanessa, I told them a little bit of what you do, right? Tell them what you know what I gotta I gotta say this too. Listen, guys. Her stage plays, right, have been seen in Walmart. I'm not talking about uh, on the digital format online. I'm talking about in the physical store of Walmart. She's been a contributing writer in the stage play Church Girl, which has aired on BET Nationwide, as well as been in Walmart. She's uh, an event planner. She has her own uh, uh, venue. She just also created a comic book. Get, uh, where does this woman find the time, Vanessa? What have I left out? Tell me what else do you do? Because I think you're Jamaican, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I'm just blessed to, you know, have various talents that God has allowed me to, to juggle. I want to first say that um, I am a writer. I don't classify myself as a playwright. I'm a writer because I can write in various formats. Um, anywhere from news articles to plays to, you know, screenplays and all of that. And now, you know, most recently with the comic, um, I have actually been in the special event industry longer than I've been in, you know, plays and all that. I started off being a wedding coordinator, wedding decorator. Um, now I actually own two um, banquet halls. Um, one is a specifically for, you know, small events, and then the other one is uh, like a wedding chapel. We also do events there. And then, of course, um, a lot of my work is, with uh, UPU Urban Playwrights United. So, you know, um, I'm just doing what I got to do to do what I got to do to get where I got to go. You know, so those are just some of the things that, um, that I've been working on right now. Girl, how did I forget? Yes, guys, she is the founder of UPU, which is the acronym for Urban Playwrights United, which has over 1,600 playwrights, writers, and producers in that Facebook group. So listen, get to the group, Urban Playwrights United. Vanessa founded that. Let, let me, let me, can I shed some insight real quick before we uh, start asking you some more questions, okay? I, I just want to say, uh, Tangie Baby Brickhouse introduced me to Urban Playwrights United, and it has been a blessing, man. Because of that, I've, I was introduced to Vanessa's book. Uh, let's see if we can get that on the screen right here. Her book, uh, Beyond the uh, Chitlin Circuit, The Ultimate Urban Playwrights Guide. Oh my goodness. Just a phenomenal book with a lot of information in it. And also, I was also introduced to the Atlanta Black Theater Festival, which we submitted two scripts. And as a result, now we're going to be reading in Atlanta in October. And I've just learned so much from you, Vanessa, and all the other playwrights in that group. And I can't tell you how significant that group is because as a playwright, I remember searching the internet, trying to find information, and I could find nothing. So is, is that... <laughs> Is that what led you to write the book? Yeah, pretty much. You know, um, when I first started off, you know, getting into the plays and all that, like so many other people that don't necessarily have a theater background but just have an idea for a script. Um, and, you know, it's, it's you don't have to have a degree to write a play. That's not the necessity of that. It's wonderful, but it's not a necessity. So there are tons of independent playwrights who are writing um, plays, but they just don't have the inside information about structure, some of the technical things, things on the business side. And so I made so many mistakes um, first doing my plays, you know, over 10 years ago. I 
been writing plays for about 20 years, but just really, really started uh, performing them live about 10, 11 years ago. And I made so many mistakes. And so um, I started meeting with playwrights here in Detroit and then started connecting us with playwrights um, in other states uh, via MySpace. It was MySpace back then. And <laughs> it just kind of came about, you know, you see, you kind of came about basis because I messed up. You know, I was ignorant in a lot of things, and I just didn't want to make the same mistakes. So I wanted to bring information to playwrights um, who are independent like me. But, you know, what I was saying, telling you earlier is, Although that was the, the format, we have actually fear professors in UPU. We have drama teachers in UPU. So we have a little bit of everybody in UPU. And it has just grown and grown and grown over these last um, eight years. And I'm just excited about, you know, from giving playwrights information to now, you know, we have a distribution label and we've gotten over 11 DVDs. Um, national uh, on national distribution for my members and just connected them with different festivals and different um, producers and all that. So it has really, really grown, and I'm continue to be excited about what's going on there on UPU. So listen to me. Answer this, right? Because I know you haven't always been into the theater. You actually had a full time job. What prompted you to leave your full time job and actually pursue your dream? Has it been easy? Tell us what it takes to make it, man. Because there are people that are watching this broadcast right now, I'm telling you, and they're saying, I want to do what Vanessa's doing, but they may be afraid. Speak to that right now. Well, you can't have fear. Uh, that, that, that's for sure. Um, the thing about it is, and I was speaking to it earlier, there's two things that everybody that has any vision has to have. Of course, there's more than two, but there is two important things. You have to study your craft. You have to understand the industry, no matter what industry it is that you're going into, you need to understand the dynamic of it, how it works, who are the power players. A lot of times, especially in a playwright world, people get an idea for a play. They don't even pick up a book. Matter of fact, they don't even know how to spell playwright. <laughs> I know that is one of it's your... It's It's unfortunate, but they don't even know how to spell playwright. Um, and then they go about doing their first play, you know, without any um, information. So it's important that you study your craft, understand what it's going to take to get where you got to go. That doesn't happen overnight. So just because you get an idea for a play doesn't mean you need to start jumping and writing it. Study. Get some, some technique to yourself and all of that. Um, and, the, and the second thing, and it's not necessarily in this order, but the second thing, is, and the most important, I'm going to say that, I'm going to say the most important, is a belief in yourself. And it's not a religious belief. A lot of people claim that they have religious faith, but they don't believe in yourself. That's actually counterproductive. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your gift because all of the sleepless nights, the money you're going to lose, the sacrifice, the people that give up, they really don't believe that they can make it. That's, that's the only difference between you and the next person that made it. It's not that uh, they are more talented or more this or more that or have more connections. It's that they have more belief and more faith in themselves and their abilities and their talents, their gifts, and their vision. And so those two things is really what it's going to take to make it. And so um, when I left my corporate job, you got to understand, this was a journey I had back and forth, I had quit a job before, mm -hmm. went back to, you know, doing full time, it was, it was a journey over some years, but what happened to, I was actually taking money from plays, and I'm not talking about making money by producing a play or two a year, that's not enough to sustain you. Right. Um, I'm a, I'm a writer for hire, so people would hire me to write things, and not just books or plays or do reviews, you know, I do website content, um, because that's, that's writing. And so people need their website to pop and sound good. And I do professional bios. And I've actually, people hire me to write resignation letters to their jobs, you know, um, obituary content. You know, so I was hired to do all of these things along with plays, you know, uh, distribution plays, touring, um, and all of that. And so I was making enough consistent money monthly to sustain my bills where I said, you know what, I'm just going to step out and keep going. So it wasn't a blind thing that I stepped out on. I stepped out because I was actually getting income for a consistent amount of time that was sustaining my household. You know what? Uh, you couldn't see me here because obviously I'm on video. But when you said you were writing obituaries and resignation uh, letters, I was like, oh, my God. Yes, you are definitely a writer. Let's uh, let's talk about your play, Boss Lady. Was it Boss Lady or Unequally Yoked that ranked number 20 on Amazon as far as the best sellers for a year? Uh, that was actually Unequally Yoked, you know, believe it or not. That was actually my, Unequally Yoked was my first play and it was my first play DVD. What's funny about that play is, it's not the best quality. I'll be the first person to tell you that. It's not the best technical quality. We didn't have the best set. 
We didn't have any name actors, any celebrity talent. Um, I'd actually recorded that DVD, I'm going to say about three times previous. And after I did this recording, I said, you know, I'm a pretty lot of money out of all this. I'm just going to put it out there. So I actually put it out on Amazon myself. Wow. Even under, distri- under distribution at that time. I thought nothing else about it. I got a call one day from um, one of the captain and saying, hey, Vanessa, you know, we're on the top 100. We're like number 74. I said, what? I was just shocked by that. But then as the days went by, we were going up and up and up and up. And for a little while, we were on the top 10 with, you know, by movies with like Stella Got a Groove back and Love and Basketball, what love has to, you know, what love got to do with it. I couldn't believe it. And so it pretty much stayed on the top of the Amazon um, African American film chart for about a year. This independent play next to movies. It was unbelievable, and that was without a distribution deal. That's actually what kind of led me into my distribution deal because, you know, once you start ranking in Amazon for a consistent amount of time, you really get attention. And anybody who's a, a writer or author or has movies out, they know how important that Amazon ranking is. And so it kind of got the attention um, of some people, and that's how I ended up eventually with my distribution deal. Man, that's awesome. Now, let's talk about Boss Lady. I seen you post something on Facebook, I think it was last week, where uh, you show where Boss Lady was positioned in um, in uh, Walmart. And I was just, like, amazed by that, man. Let's get Boss Lady up on the screen here. I think we got it up. There we go. Uh, and I was amazed by that. And in that picture, right, your DVD was on the Walmart shelf right above Tyler Perry's DVD. Talk to us. Explain to me how were you able to get your DVDs, not just one, but all of your DVDs that you've uh, put on uh, film into Walmart? Well, you know, um, it kind of started with the whole thing with Unequal Yoke. Um, by the, the time the year was up when I equally up, I had already filmed um, Boss Lady and um, my other show, Affairs. And so once we got the attention of the distributor, um, they basically signed a deal for all three of my um, DVDs. They were um, all distributed over an amount of time. I think that if memory serves me correct, and it's kind of flow sometimes, um, I had, I believe all three came out in 2013. Um, all three came out in 2013. And what people have to understand about distribution is just because you have a distribution deal, that does not mean you're going to end up in Walmart, Target, or anything else, or if Walmart's going to pull you into the store. So the distribution company has to go to these retailers and say, hey, here's this product, review it, see what you want to do with it. Um, and so Walmart decided to pull all of our titles actually into the physical store. And we were in, I think, almost 800 stores nationwide from California. We got calls from Hawaii, Alaska. New York, New Jersey. It was a phenomenal feeling. Um, yes! It was just a great Yes! Thing. It was one of my top uh, 10 things I wanted to do, you know, as a playwright, and we got to do it three times, and so it was absolutely amazing. Man, talk to us about affairs. I'm putting that up on the screen right now. Was that your first? I mean, that wasn't your first. Was that your third, your second film? That's the second. That was the second play that I did. Affairs is actually a uh, murder mystery. It's a murder mystery. It's definitely real, real unconventional. It's set in the world thought, but it's a it's a murder mystery. I'm a big murder mystery person. Um, as you'll get to see in my work, most of my work has a little mystery and a little intrigue. So that's definitely a a real, real murder mystery. And you're gonna be blown away if you get that DVD to find out, you know, what's going on in the end of that. All right, now, we've already talked about the Urban Playwrights United. You guys need to get on Facebook. That is a group on Facebook, Urban Playwrights United. Now, I want to go into the convention. I want to go back to UPU. I want to go I want to go into the convention that's coming up in Atlanta. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we have our seventh annual um, conference, which I cannot believe it's been seven years. So, um, every year, we pretty much go to a different um, city-state to do our conference. It's always the first week of December, so this year it's December 1st through the 4th. Seven represents the number of reps. Um, if anybody has been to the conference or heard about the conference, we work. We work from early in the morning to late at night. We have a heavy conference schedule with speakers, activities, outings, um, awesome competitions, and all type of activities. Even though it's very fruitful, it's very tireless. It's very physical, tiring. And so you can imagine, you know, not just the people that attend, but the people that are planning and like myself and the board members, you know, we're tired. So this year, we have been going at it for such a long time. We really want to come together and do more of a rest and a retreat. So this year, we're going to come together. We're going to have some fun. Um, we're going to go some shopping. We're going to do some sightseeing in Atlanta. We're going to probably check out some shows. Um, of course, we're going to do some of our um, 
fun, unique uh, UPU events, some of our competitions, but it's not going to be like it has been in prior years. We're just taking a break in year seven just to really refresh, replenish, and um, get ready for 2017. So uh, I'm really encouraging all playwrights from all different genres, directors, even actors, come and really connect with your brothers and sisters. The conference is life-changing. The connections, the relationships you, you will make, it's absolutely life-changing. So that's December 1st through the 4th in Atlanta, Georgia. Last time we went to Atlanta, we completely sold out a couple months before the conference. So you don't want to wait. They can check it out and um, register at www.upunetwork.info. I am definitely going to be in. Oh, look, I'm getting all up in the screen. Yes, in the yes. building. <laughs> <laughs> now talk to me, Vanessa, about this comic book. What made you decide to do this, honey? Well, this is a collaborative effort uh, with myself, a young lady named uh, Wanye Tucker and Sharice Johnson. Um, actually, what's funny about the, the comic book is it did not start off as that. That was not our idea. We actually came together because we were going to start a children's entertainment company. We were going to be hosting parties for children, getting bounce houses and all of that stuff. And so as we were planning this company, we were saying, well, what is the theme? Uh, we kind of wanted to, you know, infuse some culture in it and all of that. And it really developed from that to the Ladybug Jewel Hunters. It actually happened that organically. Um, and it happened over a course of months. We connected with an amazing um, illustrator. His name is Chris uh, out of uh, St. Louis. And so um, we are actually working on finishing our first comic book series as well as um, doing some animation. We already have the voices cast uh, for the animation part of it. Um, the Ladybugs is really going to be an amazing movement and just, you know, when the when the little kids look at the characters, um, they instantly just get a smile on their face. So um, it's going to be a great project. You're going to be hearing more. We got really something big coming up. I wish I could announce it right now, but I can't. But I got something big coming up um, for the Ladybugs in November. So um, if they actually stick to my website, which we'll give out later, and sign up for updates, they'll so definitely see what's going to be going on with the Ladybugs pretty soon. Listen, let me tell you, I am smiling the whole time during this interview because I, I get really excited at other people's success, man, other people's joy. But, you know, I have to ask you because I couldn't fathom in my life writing a comic book. Is that easier than doing a stage play or writing an obituary? Absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. It's a completely different format. It is a completely different structure. And what you got to understand is you're telling a complete story in a few words and in a few blocks, um, it is very, very difficult because pretty much we have to split the story out and then we have to, you know, I have to go and script it in just a few words. If you ever read a comic book, it's just a few words. And you have to really be able to pull that story from week to week or month to month or however often you do that. So it has been extremely challenging. It takes me a day or two to write a whole play. I don't need that. I've been doing that forever. I know the structure. I know the format. This comic, this is something totally out of my comfort zone. So, so it is very, 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 very challenging. Well, you know, that is where you grow outside of your comfort zone. So I'm excited for you. <laughs> now, um. Absolutely. I want to talk to you about being a contributing writer to the awesome stage play Church Girls. I seen it like years ago on BET. It showed nationwide. Had no idea who you were. Had no idea who Angela Dunlop Barrows were. And I hope I pronounced her last name right. But all I knew. Dunlap, Angela Dunlap. Uh -huh. Yeah, Angela Barrow Dunlap. Yeah, Miss Angela Dunlap. You know, mad respect for her. All I know is when I saw this play on VET, I just instantly fell in love with it. How did you become a contributing writer for this? Well, I had uh, met Angela. Somebody had invited Angela to one of my, actually to a fair um, from years ago. I'm going to say maybe 207, 208. Um, and we're talking about the Church Girls Comic Book Fair. And I looked at her as a, as a mentor. Before Church Girls, though, she uh, produced and uh, I played the range, which is a crazy, crazy show. <laughs> um, and so we had that experience with that. And Robin Gibbons started in that show as well. And um, Church Girl is actually based on a true story. It's based on um, a true story that happened within her family. And so she got a team of uh, together, creative people together. And we really worked on this play for months. It was uh, one of the most challenging uh, things I've ever had to do. Uh, as you know, if you anybody familiar with Church Girl, it's about actually a pastor's daughter that ends up being a stripper. But this actually happened. And so we just didn't write the script. We actually spent 
a long time in actually interviewing strippers, interviewing strippers' parents, interviewing uh, uh, strip club owners and strip club managers and all that. So we really got into the heart of what's going on in that particular world. We just didn't put those things together. And then once we did that, you know, we all had to really, really come together, squeeze our creative juices to put that on. And um, First Girls has traveled all over the country, even into Canada. Uh, it, it aired on BET, I think, starting in 2013 or 2014, and it still comes on BET yeah. and Centra. So it's just really been a phenomenal movement and something that really changed my life. Well, I have to tell you, man, the work that you guys put in that was fantastic. It was a marvelous production, and I love it. And now just to hear the backstory where you guys actually went and interviewed strippers, that just really blows Absolutely. my mind. You know, yeah. because you typically you typically don't hear something like that for a theatrical production. Now, you you know, people do that for movies. They want to get into the character and everything like that. But um, it's a little different for a theatrical production. So, I mean, hats off to you guys. Subconference. Press number of subconference from one uh -oh. to four. Or press star to return to the conference. Uh-oh, what's going on? Are you still with me? <laughs> I think we might have left her. Thank you. That situation will do. You know, interview somebody. You know, do some back work. Do some back study. That's going to take your place from being average to, you know, extraordinary. So it's really important that we start doing this type of work in theater. Yeah, I, I totally agree. We just had a little technical difficulty. I don't know if you hit a button or something, but it sounded like you left the conference, but you came back on. Something you said just now, though, I want to piggyback off that about doing hard work and getting noticed. I remember you telling me that um, someone told Angela about you, about your plays, and she came to your play. Now, here, here's the thing, and, and, and you correct me if I'm wrong. There's a stigma behind a lot of local playwrights. A lot of people don't want to come to local plays because they tend to think that it's going to be buffoonery or it's not going to be worth their money. But here is the thing. Obviously, you were putting out great shows. Uh, you were branding yourself well, and you were getting the word out. Hence, you know, Angela coming to your show, and then boom, you being a contributing writer, and now your work is seen on BET. Isn't it very important as a local playwright to invest in yourself and to perfect, well, you know, try to perfect your show. We know nobody's perfect, okay? We're going to have problems. But at least try to put on the best show that you can because your show not only uh, impacts you, but it impacts any other playwright in that area. Can you talk to us about branding and investing and putting on good shows? I mean, your brand is your name, you know, point blank. Um, one of the first I've had in the playwright community, and I've worked with, I don't even want to say hundreds, thousands, just over the years being, you know, with UPU and all that, I've worked with literally thousands of playwrights. And one of the problems is, you know, people put on one or two plays and they're ready to hit the, the tour circuit. <laughs> they're ready to go nationwide. They've not done their due diligence. Nobody's patient. Nobody wants to do the work. You know, we all have those dreams and aspirations. and There's nothing wrong with that. But it takes a process to get there. Nobody wants to go through the process. So what happens is we'll spend thousands of dollars on a venue, thousands of dollars on a band, thousands of dollars on a set, and you won't even pay a couple hundred dollars to have somebody critique your script, which is your brand, and, and at the end of the day, your writing, no matter how beautiful your venue is, your writing is what's going to make you have a career in this thing. And so a lot of people don't want to concentrate on the writing, and so a lot of the local plays, they get branded badly because the writing is bad. Nobody cares about your set. If your storyline is horrible, there's no character development, you know, people can laugh and chuckle and all of that, but beyond the laughs, you're going to have to get people, even if you have a comedy, you're going to have to give them something of substance. And so, unfortunately, a lot of playwrights are so focused on having their name in life, they won't even spend a couple hundred dollars. They won't even spend, forget that, they won't even spend $25 to buy my book or anybody else's book. They don't want to invest in their craft. So this is the difference between people who want to get hired as a ghostwriter, a writer for hire, have multiple streams of income instead of just one play because they branded themselves as a great writer. And so when people see your name on something, it doesn't matter what it is. They're interested because they know at the end of the day, I'm going to get some great writing. But absolutely, from people who are not um, theater fans. They can go to a local show and it's bad and it will tarnish everybody else. They're going to be like, you know what? Unless you're a big name or a Tyler Perry or Angela Dunlap, I'm not coming to your show. So it's real important that we work consistently and put out at least one or two plays a year to keep your name out there and let those plays be quality. It doesn't matter if you're in a 50-seater. Make sure that that 50-seater is filled with quality entertainment. That is so important. That's going to make or break 
whether you're going to stay in your local town or whether people are going to actually hire you to do work. One other question. I love that. Thank you so much how you said that. You don't care if it's a 50-seater as long as it's quality work. One, one other question. When you are an up-and-coming playwright, but well, you know, not even up-and-coming, established playwright, uh, what advice would you give somebody about partnering with every any and everybody? Because see, here's my thing. I, I don't believe that you should be partnering with everybody because everybody hasn't invested or hasn't worked their craft to be on that level that you are. And a lot of times when people see you partnered with them or you're a part of that production, that tends to bring down your brand. Now, am I looking at that in the wrong way or, or do you feel the same way? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. This is one of our major challenges because I do encourage partnership. Um, we can't do this thing alone. This thing is too big. You know, a lot of us, we, we want to ride the solo train, and we don't care if it's 10 people, you know, in the theater, as long as we got our name in lights and, you know, all of that. But partnership is important. I, I love it that, you know, I'm just going to throw this nugget in there. We've actually had partnerships uh, be formed from people who met at our conferences, and they're doing well. But it's very, 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 very important that you don't jump into it, that you know the person that you're partnering with, do not get the deer in the headlight syndrome. Unfortunately, a lot of playwrights, because I think I'm at a disadvantage because I know so many people in the industry and I know the stuff that other people don't know. Um, and so a lot of time I see people hooking up with people, going to other people's events, and I know they're nothing but a snake in the grass. They're going to try to take your intellectual, intellectual property. Uh, they're going to promise to take you to the moon and back. This promoter going to do all this for you, and it's just going to end up being no good. Unfortunately, that is a real, real dark side, but a reality of the business. The only thing I can say is that I've even been duped, um, you know, in recent years with hooking up with people in different ventures. So none of us are above it, and sometimes people can present a good package, and you think that something's good at the time, and just is not. But the main advice I can give is do not, like a marriage, don't rush into it. Don't sign papers uh, to be a partner until you guys have worked some things out. You see that person's passion. You see their ethic, their worth ethic. See if they're a person of their word. Start small, and then when it looks like there's some trust built, and uh, you see that it's a mutual uh, benefiting relationship, then move into a partnership. My greatest advice is not to rush because I've seen so many playwrights just messed up from hooking up with the wrong person. And you can hook up with somebody and they got a bad name, and your name is okay, but because you hooked up with them, now you got a bad name and people don't want to deal with you. So, no, you're not looking at that wrong at all. It is very, very critical that we understand who we got on our ship. Yes, thank you so much. I mean, you addressed that eloquently. I couldn't have said it any better myself. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. That's so important. Well, Vanessa, you know, I've had you on here for 27 minutes. Um, I'm always at my, almost at my 30 minute mark. Real quick, tell us what you got coming up, honey. Well, what I got coming up is I'm actually doing a little murder mystery interactive show at my venue, Crystal Room in uh, East Point, Michigan. It is a crazy, listen, all the plays you've seen from me, except the rain, which is crazy. They're usually real heartfelt. You're crying at the end. This ain't bad at all. It is just an hour of pure, fun, crazy, zany, murder mystery. It's interaction with the audience. It is an original piece by myself. Uh, we're going to have dinner. So maybe it's a whole two-hour thing that people are going to eat um, at first, and then we're going to go into the interactive show. I don't even want to call it a show because it's just crazy. It's just, <laughs> it's just fun. I really just want to do something fun. I didn't want no pressure. Um, I wanted to do it at my venue, you know, and so it's just going to be a blast. And I'm so happy to report the tickets have barely been on sale three weeks. We had four shows. We sold out three of those four shows. Oh, we man. Shows to sell. Yeah, I got 15 tickets left. And it's really six, seven weeks out from the show. So we are just really, really excited about this. I haven't done a play or anything in a while because I've really been focusing on my venues. But I'm excited to even do this anime show. We're going to have such a blast with it. Awesome sauce, man. You are one you are one woman on the move. Listen, my time is winding down and I hate I hate I hate to let you go. I hate I really do because you are such a wealth wealth of information. So listen guys, I'm gonna tell you real quick real quick how you can get with Vanessa get into the urban playwrights United Facebook group okay obviously it's on Facebook. That's how you connect with her but also Vanessa, um, how else can they connect with you? Well, they really want to go to my website at vanessalynn.info. That has uh, connections to everything that I'm doing, all of my books. So I can't forget my book, Girl, Get Your Date Life Right. 
Um, as far as, you know, really for single women over 35 and dealing with this crazy dating world, if they go to my website, VanessaLynn.info, it has links to everything um, that I got going on, all of my projects, DVDs, books, um, all of that, and they want to sign up for the mailing list to stay in touch with what's going on. Uh, they definitely want to connect with, uh, you know, UPU is on Facebook, but UP, the Facebook is an extension. UPU, we're a real organization. We're a real board, and we have membership and all of that. So uh, if you're a playwright of any genre, uh, you want to go to upunetwork.info and connect with UPU and definitely try to come to that conference retreat coming up in December in Atlanta. Awesome sauce. Well, listen, I thank you so much for coming on the show. Listen, we had technical difficulties earlier and you were so gracious to come back. I thank you for being our first guest in the Playwright series. You could have said no, but you said yes. And for that, I love you a long time. You understand? <laughs> So listen, anytime you want to come back on, you just let me know. We're going to be um, broadcasting uh, for the rest of this week with different playwrights. Um, hopefully you'll be able to tune in. But I'm sure I'll be getting you back on the show because you're a woman of many expertise and uh, you can help us in so many other ways. So Vanessa, thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you, Facebook Live or whoever's turning in. I've enjoyed it. Time seems like it just really flew by. It didn't seem like a half hour. I enjoyed myself as well. Awesome sauce. And for you that are tuning in during Facebook Live, or maybe you're listening on a blog post or a podcast, thank you so much for your time. Listen, we are going to be broadcasting live on Facebook the entire week. We've got some great guests coming up. We have the director of the Atlanta Black Theater Festival coming up. We have playwrights who've worked with Mr. David E. Talbert. Uh, it's just bananas. We've got playwrights that's done their own tour, have their own performing center. So listen, you have to tune in every day this week at 12 noon at 12 noon so guys i gotta go but before i go i gotta encourage you to live love learn and laugh baby don't quit follow your dreams to success i love you guys and we're out